Hey guys, what's happening? So, take a look at this. Just pick this up on offer app for 40 bucks. And if you're new to my channel, um, I fix 3D printers as a side hustle. Um, but this one's actually for myself. And uh, so I wanted something that was between my, um, you know, my, my original printer bot, which is actually my primary printer for small things, and then this big uh, CR10. So that originally was a Craigslist printer for 40 bucks, like four or five years ago. Um, obviously a lot of modifications to it, but yeah, 40 bucks on off rep. And actually what piqued my interest is when, when I looked at this is that um, that, that BL Touch, I mean that alone is like 30 bucks. So let me show you some of the features. Obviously this is jacked up. It's not a big deal. Actually, I prefer these monochrome screens too, by the way, because they interface directly with Marlin. Um, so it looks like the BL Touch wasn't wired incorrectly. Um, obviously, it's going to be my own printer, so I'm going to have a lot of modifications to it. So I'm going to open this up and see what's in it. But another thing I liked about this was that, you know, one of the things I do for a lot of people to enter threes, I do like the dual Z upgrades, you know, either with a cable mount here, but this already had double Z motors. And that's actually one of the issues with the Ender 3 is it will sag on one side uh, if you don't have a double Z. Cool. Top support. All right. All right. End stops. So, I mean, have it, if it has end stops, you automatically know that most likely it's not like a 2209 driver with the uh, endless homing or centerless homing. So, it looks like it's an undermount control box. Alright, <coughs> the extruder system is, um, I don't, looks like a, like a Titan, Titan clone of some sort, like a Titan, uh, E3D Titan clone, it has this, uh, looks like a 40 millimeter, I think it's a 40 millimeter, uh, park cooling fan, looks like maybe 40 or 30 millimeter, I think for, um, probably 40. Let's see. I mean that's just the metal housing. 40 millimeter. Yeah 30 millimeter is it's pretty it, it's it depends on how you have it placed. I mean you can get away the original E3Ds had 30 millimeter. So the fact that it's a Titan probably means that it has an E3D clone hot end. But we'll take it apart and I'll figure this all out. We'll go through it all. Um, and then yeah, I noticed that this is this is a horrible motor to use, a full size um, extruder motor, 40 millimeter extruder motor. Yeah, you want to use a pancake. Um, actually, I'm currently designing a system right now with a NEMA 14 stepper, but typically you'd want to use like a pancake stepper. Yeah, I mean it's obviously like that cheapo Creality wheel style um, wheel design. Yeah, which is not great. And they wear out of time. This is definitely a, a horrible design. The double wheel for this whole extruder. I mean, it does work, but I mean, preferably you'd want to go like with a linear rail, like that. This printer is all all linear rails everywhere. Linear rail everywhere. All the all the axes are linear rail. Um. Hmm. Yeah, forty bucks. So yeah, I mean, I just gotta look at it. I gotta see what kind of main board's on there, what kind of firmware's on there. And uh, if it's 8-bit board, then I'm going to uh, change the board out. Um, just because with the 8-bit boards, you have to use the old Arduino IDE to uh, flash it on there. And uh, I mean, with the newer 32-bit boards, you can just load it from an SD card. Um, USB cable. Get that off there. What is this thing right here? Alright. Alright, so yeah, came with a glass bed too. You know, this thing's gonna be ready to go. Um This should probably be uh, facing forward. Because if it's facing backwards, eventually if you're doing a high print it's gonna bind. So you'd probably wanna flip this forward. Uh I mean obviously I'm not gonna do that mount. I just have my own mount over here with the uh, ball bearings like that. See, yeah, so I'll end up just probably print out on one of my own mounts. All my stuff is on my Thingiverse page, by the way, if you need it or want. Um, it came with a crazy, uh, 
like a 12 foot or 15 foot power cable. Um, one of the issues what I do for most a lot of people that convert over to like the BL Touch is one of the first things you want to do is convert your bed to fixed mounts because you don't want to be fighting two different scenarios. You don't want to be fighting the spring height and as well as the bed leveling. So if you, when you convert to fixed, you know, like like aluminum spacer in there, or I mean sometimes I 3D print them too, um, because you don't want to be fighting two different battles for levelness. So always convert those things. Get rid of those springs right away. Um, I mean, I could maybe convert this to a linear rail. This is going to be my printer, so I'm going to obviously deck it out. All right, so take a look at that main board. Well, I mean, I just by I can tell by looking at it, it looks pretty old. Um, let's see if my glass are strong. I can see that it is. An at now, well, if it's at I'll take a bit. But I'm wondering, like the drivers. And those look like pretty small heat sinks, so I would really highly doubt those are trinamics. The drivers, we can see those four little heat sinks right there. But on a positive note, though, um, it is a mean well power supply, which is unusual. Uh, and that's sort of like a, I mean, it's not higher, it's not high end, but it's, it's more of a name brand. Um, okay. So, okay, so I'm not going to use, I'm going to get a pancake stepper, and uh, obviously I'm not going to be using this board. Yeah, um, I mean, I'll take a look at the specs on it, but it's not, you know, I mean, I'm not going to go going back to 8-bit boards. I mean, you can't, you can't kind of run Marlin 2.0 on it, but, I mean, there's huge advancements in, in Marlin 2.0. So, um, that's definitely a no-go. But, I mean, all the stuff is super cheap. I mean, like, since I bought the printer for 40 bucks. You know, I mean, I probably put about another fifty into it. It'd be a pretty badass printer. Well, I mean, if I want to go all the way with the linear rails, I'm probably looking at maybe like a hundred, hundred dollars, maybe, hundred fifty, maybe. I guess I'll be making uh, designing parts for this thing. So I might put my extruder system on there, my Orca extruder system on there. Yeah, the ultralight, you know, NEMA 14 extruder system. Yeah, Titan was big about four or five years ago. Yeah, three or four years ago, probably. Yeah, so I'd probably want to go with like a d double drive, dual drive, Bontex style. Wait, hold on a second here. It says Creality version 2 board. So they took Creality's board, it looks like. Yeah, I guess I'm thinking about it. I can see the similarities now. Um, yeah, that will definitely have to be replaced, though, because I'm not doing 8-bit. Alright, so I did a little research on that board. And this might actually have Trinamic 228 drivers and Marlin 2.0. Um, one of the issues with these Creality boards, too, is they don't typically have EEPROMs on them. So, any of the settings you save in Marlin are saved to the SD card. Whereas any other board, like an SKR board, Big Two Tech, or... Uh, there's actually an EEPROM on the motherboard. And that's actually where the, the M500 settings are, or are stored on the EEPROM. Right, so I'm the extra cable, I guess, is a film detector. I may never use this. All right, let's power this thing on. Come on, be able to touch the wire. It's this ball. Myelin 2.0. Oh, I guess it's broken. I can't push down on it. <laughs> Um, maybe I can, I'm probably like I'm going to break it by trying to bend it back. Yeah, so I did break those off. And I can still kind of twist it. But probably what I'll end up doing is maybe I'll sand it flat maybe and drill it out. Tap it. Media released. Actually, I might even have an extra one of these LCDs. Um. Let's see if it's set for BL touch. I mean, typically, that's his neighbor. <laughs> Not having the thing on there. Okay, uh, configuration. Z probe offset, so that's. So, well, it's actually a working machine. Alright, so just a couple things I'm going to fix before I do a print. I'm going to 
fished the uh, BL touch wire through here. I just can't stand these loose wires everywhere. And got rid of the filament sensor. There was extra Z wire. The old Z end stop. You don't need that anymore because of the BL touch. Um, you guys ever wonder how I fish these things through the, the wire? It's usually like a long rod, electric tape. And you just scrunch these forward like that. You know, create like a thing in there. I make it really short. That's why I, the, the, the length is as short as possible. I just scrunch it all up. Alright, so there is the bed. So one thing I noticed is that the, it's not driven by an external MOSFET. At least I can see anywhere in here. So the MOSFET, the board MOSFET is actually running off the board. Which is probably going to be covered in that heat sink right there. But ideally for a bed this size, you're going to be right teeter-tottering right where you should probably you'd be using an external MOSFET. Um, because it's, I mean, you can get away with an Ender 3, but this is probably, you know, this is bigger than Ender 3, so. Um, alright, so I flip the bed around. Yeah, it's missing that little section right there. Got some bed clips on it. I mean, obviously it looks a lot nicer now with the wires organized and fish through there. Blew it off my air compressor. Make sure that thing's tight. Let's see if I can do auto home here. Like, what depends on what say it, it depends on how you have this thing. Um, sure, this should be a G28 command. Should go back home each ac each access. Okay, why? It should go to the center. Be able to touch it, come down, and hit the center of the bed. Yeah, this is obviously not a trinamic drivers. You hear how noisy it is. Yeah. This is, what are those called, the Allegro drivers? Or the 8-2, I can't remember the exact number. The, the rear are old school drivers. Alright, so G28. So I am going to set up Cura and create a calibration cube to, to go. Then eventually, like I said, I'll be doing Octoprint, because all my other printers have Octoprint cameras on them. So once I get this thing fully dialed in, it's going to have all the bells and whistles. If you're ever going to have any uh, printer with dual Z drive, you should always get some one, two, three blocks. That way you should make sure they're aligned correctly. Put a link down below if you want some of these. They're like only 15 bucks on uh, Amazon. That way they're, they're parallel, or even perfectly flat with the board. And got an SD card loaded. I'm just going to do a calibration cube here. And I do want to be doing uh, 20 skirt lines, just so I can dial the Z. Offset. Let's see if this thing actually works. Sometimes there's an issue with these SD cards. Um, print from media. Color cube. Print. So it's PLA plus. It's going to be 210 degrees. And uh, all right, so I'm going to dial in the Z on this one. This should be a tune. What's funny is that the Marlin display is different than every single printer. It's how you, how, when you when you compile the software is how you you can adjust where this stuff's at. So I, my, my my file I have it at zero zero offset. I think it was one point four stock when I saw it when I got here. But I just know like the Creality printers don't have an EEPROM. So yeah, I mean obviously I'm not going to stick with this board, but I'm just going to try to get everything working as if as a forty dollar printer. I do actually like how they use a uh, twenty. 40 rail, if you're going to be using the wheel design, it would actually make it more stable. Like mine over here, but I'm using a linear rail. It's a 2020 rail. This was the first version of my extruder system, and when I designed this thing, I wanted to be able to see. I didn't want this to be all hidden away. Like a lot of these ones with these elaborate uh, fan systems, you can't see the, the nozzle tip. It's hard to. You have to get way down in there to see it, you know? Plus, if you ever get a jam, it's so far nested in here. I mean, this is not that bad. I mean, I've seen one way worse. But you have to take the whole thing apart just to unclog a jam. Whereas with my design, this is the first version of it. My new one, the Orca, which is on my Thingiverse page, um, it's based on the same design the principle where you can take three screws out, just pop it out, and pull the whole thing apart to pull jam out. Like, if you do a lot of 3D printing, you know, it's a nightmare to have to take these whole things apart. It's just, you know, you spend an hour trying to take it apart and get the jam out. Alright, so this is going to do a G28 command, which is home, auto home. And in my G code, in my Cura up there, I told it to do a G29. It's going to 
off. It should do nine point. Well, I don't know actually how Marlin set. That didn't do a G29. That's weird. Alright, so let's see. I'm going to get this thing dialed in. But it didn't do a bed leveling. I mean, I told to specifically do a G29 command. We are... Wow, we're dialed in right away. Well, I guess it's... I mean, it already looks dialed in already. It's weird. Okay. Why didn't I do G29 command? I mean, G29 is, uh, does the actual BL touch bed leveling. I was thinking here by the sound of this thing that it's not running trinamic drivers. So, let's see, and the next step would be once it prints down this first layer, then this hard cooling fan should kick on right here because it's PLA filament. I mean, if you're doing like ABS, it wouldn't kick on, but um, yeah, so noisy. Fans are alright, not that bad. Yeah, like I said, this is so heavy to have on here. This, you don't need this massive ex extruder motor here. Okay, yeah, part cooling fan kicked on, first layer. All right, cool, let it go. Come back. All right, there it is. First print. Could probably bring the uh, offset in about 1.1 millimeter. I can see some layer lines in there. But, um, eh. I mean, I think a little micro stepping would look a lot better, but that's actually pretty damn good, you know, for a stock printer. Alright, cool. Alright, yeah, $40 off wrap printer. Yield touch, direct drive, double Z. Alright, 